A certain drug is used to treat asthma. In a clinical trial of the drug, 27 of 251 treated subjects experienced headaches. And that's based on data from the manufacturer. Now, the accompanying calculator display over here to the right shows results from a test of the claim that less than 12% of treated subjects experienced headaches. We want to use the normal distribution as an approximation to the binomial distribution and assume a 0.05 significance level to complete parts A through E below. So first part that we want to ask us is the test two-tailed, left-tailed, or right-tailed. What we're going to do is let's just analyze this display first, okay? So in the problem, okay, we want to identify what is the claim. Well, they're telling us that the following is the claim. And the claim is that, uh, that it's less than 12% of the treated subjects. So therefore, here is our claim. So that's the prop or the prop of uh, the proportion represents P, which is less than 0 0.12. Okay, so this represents the claim. Okay, this is our test statistic. So they have given to that to us in our display here. Okay, and then this value represents the p value, which is that probability. Okay, and then here this represents the point estimate. Okay, and so the point estimate is based on the sample okay so if we take a look here here is the sample okay and so that is 27 over 251 well let's see how that number matches to the display so if we take 27 and divided by 251 we get the following value 0 0.10 and let's just go ahead and copy that result here okay and you can see that matches our point estimate and then here we have n which is the sample size and so we can see that that represents our sample size so it's really important to first understand the display so then we can move forward okay and so we know what the significance level is. So now we're going to go ahead and fill in the information that we have. Well, we know that the claim is the following. The claim is that the population proportion is less than 0 0.12. And therefore, the opposite of the claim would then be that the proportion is greater than or equal to 0 0.12. Okay, now we can determine what is the null in the alternative hypothesis hypothesis by using that. So we know that the null hypothesis is always going to contain the equality. So the equality is in the opposite of the claim and so therefore P is going to equal 0 0.12 and then the alternative hypothesis is now going to have the claim which is P is less than 0.12 okay now it says to use the alternative hypothesis to determine whether it is a left right or two tail distribution well here is all alt alternative you can see the arrow the uh, the inequality is pointing left so that's why it's a left tailed test so now we can come over here and answer this question is this test this test is a left tail test. Let's check our answer and there is our result. Now it says what is the test statistic? Okay, so first let's go ahead and put in the significance level. So we know the significance level from the question is 0 0.05. Okay, and then it's given the test statistic and it says here that they want us to round that to two decimal places. So if we come up here and look at the test statistic, we're going to get negative 0.61. So therefore, the test statistic is negative 0.61, and that's being rounded to two decimal places. So let's go ahead and put that in there. So negative 
And there is our answer. Now it says, what is the p-value? Well, we have the p-value, which is right there. Let's go ahead and copy that. And we can bring that down to our problem here. So it says, what is the p-value? Well, remember here that the p-value is the probability of that particular curve. So the area in that curve. So if we had drawn our bell curve, okay, with our mean of zero, and we see that the test statistic is to the left of that, which is negative 0 0.61, well, this is going to be the p-value. And that p-value, they want us to round it to four decimal places. So if we round it to four decimal places, we see that we get 0 0.2723. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that in there. 0 0.2723, and there is our p-value. Okay, now it says identify the null hypothesis. Well, we can come back up here, and we already know what the null hypothesis is. The null hypothesis is where p is equal to 0 0.12. So let's go ahead and select that. And now it says decide whether to reject the null hypothesis. So what we now need to do is compare okay the p-value with the significance level so we know that the p-value is 0 0.2723 and then we know that the significance level is 0 0.05 and we know that this p-value is greater than the significance level so we reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level and we fail to reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is greater than the significance level. So therefore, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is greater than the significance level. So we would say, C, we fail to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is greater than the significance level. Okay, and now it says, what is the final conclusion? So now we need to determine what is the final conclusion. Okay, so now the next step that we want to do is, okay, determine the conclusion. So, in order to state the conclusion, we need to look at the following. Okay, does the original claim contain the equality or does it not contain the equality? Those are the questions that we need to ask, okay? So if we come up, up here, let's take a look at the claim. The claim does not contain the equality. So that means that we can now eliminate the claims that suggest where it includes the equality. And now we need to determine, okay, since it includes the, since it does not include the equality, now we need to say it fails to reject. So we're not going to use the first option we would then use this option here. So this option tells us that the original claim does not include equality and we fail to reject the null. So we would say there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that followed by the original claim. So this would be our conclusion. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that less than 12% of treated subjects experienced headaches. So we would say that there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that less than 12% of treated subjects experience headaches. We're going to select C and there is our result.